Welcome everybody, welcome back to Homestead Heart, and today we are going to can some zucchini and yellow squash. Y'all stay tuned. So as you can see, I have, as you can see, I have my squash here on the counter. You know this is squash time, y'all. Those squash plants, they be cranking out that squash, right? Like them chickens be popping out them eggs, they be cranking out this squash. So we have our squash here on the counter, our jars, my canning tools, which is of course my funnel, my debubbler, my jar lifter. I don't have my magnet out, but I'll get it because I have my lid simmering over here. And I have my pressure canner because you will need to pressure can this, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is start getting all this squash cut up so we can get it ready to oh and I got my salt right here on the counter now this time I'm using my uh, pink Himalayan sea salt instead of the kosher salt I do like the pink Himalayan sea salt so that's what I'm going to be using that's actually my favorite I'm not using iodized salt don't use iodized salt in your products and make sure it just don't look good in that jar it clouds up everything you can't see it it just don't okay so i'm gonna go ahead now and start getting this cut up i'm gonna cut off both ends of my squash okay and i'm gonna sit those to the side because chickens love them and i'm gonna cut this down the middle you can cut them in in circles i cut them in circles before but this time i'm gonna do them different yes i am and i'm gonna do about one inch cubes Where's my funnel? And I'm just going to start loading them into the jar. Just like that. Cut that in half. Again, into these one inch cubes. Or close to it. See what I'm saying? Like so. And get them in the jars. Now, you could blanch your squash, okay? Some people do. And I have blanched it before, cut that pull it off. <laughs> I have blanched them before, but this time I'm not blanching them. I think I'm gonna prefer them better not blanched. Yeah, I think I'm gonna like it better if they're not blanched. So yeah, that's why I'm doing it this way. Okay, grab me another yellow squash. Now on my crook neck squash, you see how it has the necks on it? I cut those necks off and I'm going to save that in that bowl right there because I want my squash to be uniformed in my jars as possible. So all the necks, I just take them off. That's what I cook for dinner. <laughs> I cook them for dinner. I'm going to save them. I'm saving them for dinner. All right. Now, once this gets in the jar, I'm going to tamp this down. Let me put this on this little thing here. I can tamp that down because when you tamp it down you get a little more space in that jar so yeah I'm gonna tamp that down I'm gonna add another zucchini cut off my end and then I'm gonna finish off the jar with the rest of the zucchini you like that There we go. I don't know. I might be able to get the rest of it in here. Let's see. And I'm not going to mash it. You know, I'm just trying to get it in there. Tap it down and see how much I can get. All right. That's too much. But that'll do. See that jar? That's what that looks like. I'm just going to sit it to the side. I'm going to start with my next jar. Now, I'm going to tell y'all this. There is not an approved canning recipe for canning squash, okay? You're not going to find it in any of your canning books. They don't have an approved recipe, so can it at your own risk, okay? 
All right, now let's get back to the squash. So, Miss H, even though there's not an approved canning recipe, you still gonna can that squash? You shouldn't can that squash, Mrs. Homestead Heart. Hmm. Ooh, watch me, watch me. Ooh, watch me. <laughs> ooh, 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 watch me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put a few of those in there. I'm gonna stop right there with that because I want to get some zucchini in there. Put that bit in half. Get those in there like so. Uh-huh. Give that a temp. Add in my yellow. Now, what recipe am I going to make with this? I'm going to tell y'all something. Me and my mama been talking about some squash casserole. And ooh wee, does this make some good squash casserole. I mean it. It makes some good squash casserole. See that neck? Cut that neck off. I'm putting that in my bowl. That's my dinner tonight. Yes, it is. I'm saving all of them. The necks are good. The necks are delicious. Oops, I need another jar. So now, you want to make a delicious zucchini casserole? Squash casserole? Boy, if you don't shut your mouth. Hush up all that fuss over there. So now, making a, a zucchini jacks a piece of squash fail, you can have it. That'll keep you quiet for a minute. <laughs> What your problem is today all right so i'm just gonna finish getting these cut up putting in the jars this is so easy and you notice i'm just filling them up as i go just filling them up as i go but they are going to make such a delicious squash casserole and I'm going to tell you something else. You know how sometimes those uh, those zucchinis can get kind of big and get away from you real quick? I mean, they get so big. Those are perfect for canning. Now, yeah, they're going to have some seeds in them, but that's all right. They're going to be perfect for canning. So, yeah, those are good, too. So, if you think they're too big and you can't do nothing with them, oh, yes, you can. You cut that off because that don't look too good. You can do something with them. You can can them up. I think that's going to do it for this jar. Might have a few too many. Too, too many. Yeah. Sit that to the side. Grab another jar. Isn't this easy? Canning up squash ain't complicated at all. Bud, 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 bud. We're gonna have a lot of necks available for squash for uh, for dinner tonight. My goodness. I know, bud, I know. Good gracious. I had to cut this in threes. It's so big. But it's still good. You can see the seeds. They're very small. It's just it got really big. All right, get all of those in the jar. Okay. Tamp that down. Grab another one. Up, we're getting these cut off. Move this over here. And right now, I am at eight jars. So I have 
a pressure canner full because my canner holds seven quarts. So I already have a full pressure canner with just what I have right here. And then I have one extra. Somebody asked the question. I dropped another squash. Somebody asked the question, can you, if you're doing multi multiple batches, can you do some, put them in the canner and have the others waiting, I believe, I'm paraphrasing, but have the others waiting, kind of waiting in the cut, you know, before your other products are done out of the canner. Can you just have them sitting and wait so you could keep the process moving along? And the answer to that is it depends on what you're canning. Some things you can do that with. Some things you shouldn't do it with. Absolutely not, right? So for example, the squash that I'm doing, if I'm going to be doing multiple batches of squash, then I can do that with my squash because it's cold. It's raw pack. It's going to be cold water going in, going into a cold canner. So it's not going to hurt the squash to sit in a jar on the counter in water for the 40 minutes of processing time, plus maybe another 20 minutes or so for the canner to cool down, it's not gonna hurt your squash to do that, right? But if you're canning something like potato, I mean, something like um, meat, you don't wanna have raw meat sitting on the counter while you waiting for the pressure canner to finish processing jars or coming down from pressure. You don't want to do that. I have three squash left. I got all that squash. I got three left. I got my little deformed one. <laughs> and I got two more. So I'll add that to my mix in a bowl. Yep. That's dinner. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm going to try to get, well, I ain't going to be able to get all of this down. Well, there we go. And that one can too. And that probably could get down over there. Okay. So now, I have all of this in the jars. Okay. Now simply time to put water in all of them. Get at the jakes. Oop. Got my magnet. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna get water put down in all of the jars. Let me pull this out right now. Cause y'all know I forget to debubble in a minute so i gotta put this baby out where i can see it <laughs> so now this is my debubbler and it's also a head spacing tool so for example when i say leave a one inch head space that one inch head space is going to be the distance from your lid to the product so this is my one inch head space right here see that mm-hmm Oh, y'all can't see. That's the one inch head space right there. So that's letting me know right there that this is how far that product, this is as high as that product can come in this jar. Okay? So and if it's above that, it's too much. You got to take some out. So I got to take this piece out. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get the water added. To the canner I'm gonna put a little bit more than that one inch requires because once I debubble that water level is gonna go down and I'll show you that in a second but right now and this water right here is room temperature it's not cold it's just room temperature <coughs> so 
So yeah, as my squash keeps cranking out squash, I'll be doing a batch every chance I get. All that we don't eat, it'll be going in the canner. I get to work on my posture. Posture, you know, no, I stand up straight. Especially if my daughter see me. I used to always fuss at them about their posture. I used to tell them, look, get them shoulders up, back, and down. Stand up straight. <laughs> and now, look at me. I'm slouching. You got to stand up straight. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to get all of the water added to these jars. I forgot to add my salt. Okay. Let me grab my spoon, teaspoon. Look at that, half a tablespoon. But I'm not putting in a full tablespoon of salt. This is a half a tablespoon, and this will do. I love this pink Himalayan sea salt. It's awesome. Look like I dropped some water in it or something, because it's kind of moist. What's that? Because I just scrape what's left in there. That'll do. Okay. Now I can finish adding my water to that jar. I hope y'all are finding this to be easy and helpful. And that it motivates you to do it for yourself. Even if you're not growing squash. And I'll say this to everybody who wants to can. But you, you don't have a garden. Or you don't have the space for a garden. Right now. You probably can find squash. Everywhere. At a reasonable price. Now, I don't know how many pounds I have here, but I can tell you, buy as much as you want to can and eat the rest, okay? Go on and get it while the getting is good. Okay, so I'm going to sit that to the side, grab my bee bubbler. <laughs> Let me tilt y'all down some so y'all can see this bee bubble. So now I'm going to... Add this here. Let me show y'all this. Do y'all see these bubbles? This is why you should debubble your jar right here. Let me see. Oh, on this side. Come on, go. Don't want to cooperate. Do y'all see them bubbles coming up out this jar? Wait a minute. Yeah. He just don't want to cooperate because I'm holding it in the air. But anyway, you want to push that down real good in the sides and give it a wiggle. And then just pat that back down. And like I said, your water level is going to drop. So now I need to add a little more water to it to bring it back up to that one inch head space. And then we're good. Slide you to the back. Bring you to the front. All them air bubbles coming up out of there. So definitely want to do this. Just wiggle that down the sides. You're just trying to release as much air as you can. All right, I'm going to pat those little squash babies back down in there. Sit that to the side. Yeah, got to get that air out of there, y'all. Okay, so I have my towel and I'm dipping it in. A fourth of a cup of vinegar is what I have. And I'm just going to wipe my rims off. If you have paper towels, you can use paper towels. I don't have any, so I'm using one of my, my towels. I'm just going to wipe off the rims. And to everybody that's new to canning, 
what you want to do is after you once you know when you're washing your jars and you're checking them to make sure they're not broken remember to gently run your finger around the rim of that jar to make sure that rim is not cracked okay because you don't want your jars to not seal so definitely wipe the rims of your jars and I know that this doesn't have any type of oil or fat in it but I use vinegar anyway not to mention I put salt in the jar so I don't want a grain of salt to be sitting on the rim keep my jar from sealing so I'm just gonna wipe it all off I use the vinegar anyway to put in the canner so I may as well use it to wipe my rims off may as well all right now that I have all of my rims clean I'm gonna take this little bit of vinegar and I'm gonna drop it in this pressure canner over here in case you didn't know vinegar keeps the jars from clouding inside of your pressure canner okay wipe it down keep them jars from clouding okay now I'm gonna grab my lids they are sitting in this little pot of warm water Where is my magnet I'm going to take my magnet and put it in that warm water. Somebody asked me about the magnet and they're, you know, they didn't have one or couldn't find one. And I'm going to tell you that I believe because Ball has said you don't have to, you no longer have to simmer your lids. They stopped putting the magnet in the canning tools. Yeah, because your canning tools now in that little box no longer has the magnet in it. It used to be a four-piece canning tool set that came with your debubbler, your jar lifter, your um, oh, your funnel, and your magnet. But now, because they say no longer simmer the lids, they don't include the magnet. Isn't that awful? That's awful. So, if you want one of these magnets because you still want to simmer your lids, you're going to have to try to find one separately on Amazon somewhere, lid magnet. They may still have them, and that's what you're going to have to do, okay? Got my bands. Oops. Get that on that jar. This makes it easier to hold these bands. Hold those, uh, hold these bands in place. Put them on something like this, something you can hold them. All right, so now I'm gonna put these on fingertip tight. That means I'm not gonna crank down on them. You don't wanna over tighten. You don't want no problems. So don't over tighten. Okay, so I have eight jar. Man, I can't put all eight of these in my candle. I could only put in seven. I guess one of these gonna have to go in the refrigerator because I'm gonna have to cook this. I'm not gonna start my candle again for one jar. All right, so now we're gonna get them in the candle. I'm gonna get my jars added to the canner. All seven quarts. Especially the ones with the zucchini in it. That's four, five. Isn't that nice? Look at that. Isn't that nice? That is precious. That is nice. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, one more. We got seven quarts in this baby. <laughs> I'm going to crank my heat up to high. Yes, I am. Let me squirrel y'all a little bit. Now, I'm going to grab my lid. Now, remember, y'all, don't forget, after every three, four uses, 
you want to give that gasket a good oiling, okay? Oil that gasket really good, all right? All right. Yeah, you don't want to go without oiling that gasket too much. You don't want to wear this joker out. You want to keep it in good repair, okay? So I'm going to get this on. My little nipple is in good shape. I don't know why I call it a nipple, but I do. It keeps popping in and out, so that lets me know it's good. My little rubber gasket right here, that's good. And my little vent pipe right here is good. I can see straight through it. Nothing is clogging that up. So now, I'm going to get my head on. Hey, that lock. See how easy that lock? Look at that. Because that gasket got that all on. <laughs> See there? It, now, sometimes if you notice when you close your canner and that thing is hard to put in place, all that gasket. All right. Look at that. Boom. And I'm going to make sure this is centered on my stove. And it's on high heat. Now, what this is going to have to do to everybody that's new to canning, this has to uh, start to build up pressure. And when it starts to build up pressure, it's going to start a process called venting. And that's where you have a steady flow of steam coming out this vent pipe right here. And when we get a steady flow of steam, this is for all my newbies, I'm going to bring you back and show you what that looks like. Okay? Because we have a steady flow of steam. Probably can't see it. Coming out of this vent pipe right here. It's a steady flow of steam that's coming up out of this pipe. And this has to vent like this for 10 full minutes. Okay? So I've already started my timer. And then after 10 minutes, we're going to come back and put on this pressure regulator. And um, I'll bring you back and show you that next step. Okay? So y'all stay tuned. Okay, so the timer has gone off. It has vented for 10 minutes. Turn that off. Now I'm going to put this pressure regulator on. Okay, so now, bud, now this has to build up to 10 pounds. This has to build up to 10 pounds of pressure. And once it gets to between 10 and 11 pounds of pressure, I'm going to reduce my heat to keep this canner at 10 to 11 pounds of pressure. And for me, I know I'm going to end up slowly reducing it all the way down to low. And then once it reaches that 10 pounds, I'm going to start my timer for 40 minutes. I'm canning quart size jars of squash so i'll be canning them for 40 minutes okay so y'all stay tuned this is on its way up to 10 pounds of pressure y'all stay tuned after this is done for 70 uh 40 minutes i'll bring y'all back and we will take the finished product out of the can stay tuned the timer has gone off all i'm gonna do now is just turn off my fire turn off my timer and that's it and this pressure canner is still at 11 pounds of pressure. So for all of my newbies, I say it in every video, don't touch this camera. Leave the camera where is it? Leave it where is it? Okay, leave it where it's at. And we're going to let this baby come all the way down from pressure. It got to be a zero, okay? That nipple in the back, that's got to be down. Okay, once that nipple is down, this gauge is at zero, then, and only then, can we take off this pressure regulator and open the lid and take out our jars, okay? So we don't come back, because I got food over here I'm cooking at the same time, so I got to get back to it. But we'll be back when it's time to take these babies out of the camp. Y'all stick around. So, the pressure gauge is down to zero. Of course, the timer was up. I processed these for 40 minutes in the canner. Once that 40 minutes was up, I, like you saw, I turned the fire off and I let this canner sit until the pressure gauge came all the way down to zero. 
and that nipple in the back is all the way down. So now it's safe for me to take off my little pressure regulator here and it's safe for me to remove the lid on my canner. I always like to do like a release pause. And then when you open the canner, please open it away from you, okay? Y'all better listen to me. Don't say I didn't warn you. Open it away from you, okay? Just like so. Up and open. Y'all see why? Yeah. That's so hot. <laughs> now I am ready to take them out of the canner. And they are still boiling inside. Let's do this nice and slow. <laughs> I'm going to go for the middle jaw first. Woo! Look at that. All right now, the whole can of four. Beautiful. This is just gorgeous. Look at there, y'all. Grab you. All right. Last one. That's all of them. Let's have a look. All right, look at those beautiful jars of squash. Let me pick one up for you so you can see what I see. Y'all see that? Look at there. And they still boiling, so it's got a little air space in the middle. But that's okay. Once they they gonna settle down. Look at this. Ooh, make sure I got a grip on that. Look at that beautiful jar of squash. It's just screaming, make some zucchini casserole, some squash casserole. Ain't it just screaming? Look at that. Y'all, that is beautiful. That is seven quarts of squash ready to go. There is one last thing that I want to mention. Make sure that you check your altitude so you will know exactly how many pounds of pressure you need to safely process your squash. Don't go by mine, okay? You need to research your altitude and then research, and it actually it'll tell you, you know, if you have that ball book guide to canning that I always talk about, in that book, it'll tell you if you're at X amount for an altitude, it'll tell you how many pounds of pressure to can your food at. So get that ball book guide to canning, okay? It's a little thin book. It's way over there. Y'all want me to go get it, don't you? Okay. Okay, this is the book. This is the ball book guide to canning and preserving. Little thin book, see that? And this is the newest edition right here. I, in fact, Mr. H just bought this from me um, not long ago because my other one from 2009 or something was falling to pieces. I wasn't getting rid of it. And he was like, mm -mm. <laughs> we gotta do better than this. <laughs> so he got me another one and I love this little book. So y'all get this little thin book. You will not regret the $9 that it costs, I think. I think it was like $8 or $9 or $10, something like that. Probably $9, I don't know. But you won't regret it. Get the book. It has some great recipes in it too, okay? So that's going to do it, you all. What the? Thank you so much for following me today while I canned up my seven quarts of zucchini and yellow squash. I certainly appreciate you all joining me today. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video that we upload to our channel. So thank you all so much again. Subscribers, new and existing, I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you, and I'll see you in the next video.